What's up, lovers of whiskey and watches of YouTube? I am the malt activist after a brief hiatus. I know I'm taking too long to make these videos, but I have this personal project that I've been working on, and ooh, I'm super excited about it. Um, I can't tell you what it is right now, but in about four days' time, I will be the most famous person on the planet. More on that later. However, right now, whiskey. Now, if you remember about maybe a couple of weeks ago, I had done a review of the 2003 Chardonnay cask matured uh, Glen Moray single cask, which in my opinion was an absolute cracker of a dram. I had also told you that there were three in that series and we'd only touched upon one, the Chardonnay. And I am happy to inform you that I have the other two in the series with me today. So. Without further ado, I have with me, hold on, wrong bottles. Oh, so many bottles, so many bottles. Ah, the curse of the privileged. Forget I said that. <laughs> what a bad thing to say. So, two more in that series after Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, and Burgundy, both 2004. Here you go. Wow, what can I say? So I was really excited for one very, very obvious reason, and that is the ABV on these babies. 60.1% on the burgundy cask, and ladies and gentlemen, 60.3% hmm, on the Shelling Blanc cask. Uh, which one should I try first? It doesn't matter really. I've heard that the burgundy one is the best of the lot. I have not tried it. So I think let's try and save hopefully the best for the last. In the meantime, let's pour out a little bit from the Shenning Blanc cask. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. No chill filtration, no color added. Served at cost strength, love it. Okay, what do we know? Uh, we know this was uh, distilled in 2004. Bloody, bloody, blah. This is cost number 341. Bloody, bloody, blah. In Shannon Blanc casks. Interesting. I've not heard, so I've not really heard of a Shannon Blanc or a Chardonnay cask um, maturation. I'm Chardonnay, I'm not 100% sure, but Shannon Blanc. <sighs> My first time. So, very interesting, very eager to see what this um, this whiskey tastes like. I'm really, really fascinated by the color. It's so dark, right? Uh, you know, given that um, it's a white wine at the end of the day, the Chenin Blanc. So it must be all those sugars that the wood has like leached from the spirit and, and just imparted into this whiskey. Wow. No off note. Oh, that's brilliant. Absolutely no off note here. It's very fruity and floral. I know, very vague terms. Toasted oak. There's apples, there's pears. There's some greens in there as well. I want to say white grapes, but that's such an obvious, that's such an obvious flavor profile. I'm not going to say that even though I get it. Bit of a dusty, how should I say this? Dunnage. Yeah, like a Dunnage warehouse. And I get that in, you know, um, in wine, uh, wine matured uh, whiskeys, I get that very specific aroma. I think it's quite unique to that sort of maturation. So, uh, even though this is 60.3% uh, ABV, I'm not, uh, I'm not getting any nose burns. I'm not getting alcohol burns. I'm getting a really, really rounded, well-rounded, robust, robust nose. Like I said, very fruity, chocolatey caramel as well in there. Overall, I like the nose. 
and uh, I'd be surprised if I didn't because uh, all three seem to be like very well constructed whiskies, you know, just using uh, very good distillate uh, in excellent casks and just very, very, very good maturation. I'm impressed, Glen Murray. You know, you were a, you're a middle of the road, easy going, no fuss, no major complexity distillery and then you do this. I'm impressed. I haven't even drunk it yet. Chin chin. Damn, son. Ah, that is awesome. Super spicy. That alcohol really rides your palate. Crazy. Ah, very citrusy. Um, uh, candy ginger. Um, breakfast marmalade. Um, again, there's a bit of uh, greens in there as well. Herbaceous. The apples and pears are back. Very full bodied, very intense. Ooh, Coca Cola, cherry drops. Bam, sitting right here. This is, yeah, this is not for the faint of heart. Um, I think these are quite modestly priced as well. 85 pounds roughly. You know, you know the vintage. This is like a 16, 15, 16 year old whiskey. So I think that's a decent price for it, if I'm not mistaken. Let's try it with literally a dab of water. Let's see if that does something. I like it the way it is. I'll be honest with you. I'm happy to drink this at 60.3%. I don't feel the need to, I don't feel the need to add any water to it, but I just want to see if anything out of the ordinary happens. Woo. Okay, still punchy, but I think it's lost its um, zing if you like, so it's not as, it's not as intensely fruity and floral and chocolatey and caramelly as it was before, before the water. Um, dusty, yeah. Um, and, a and slightly more oaky with water. So my, um, my recommendation is to have this straight. Um, maybe add slightly less water than I did. Um, but again, you know, because that's not a science, I don't, I don't know how how that thing works. Yeah. Yeah. De I, I, yeah. So just for me, definitely without water. Um, uh, but you know, with, with water, it does become a little more pal palatable. Uh, but I think it loses that, mm, that, uh, uh, that uh, X factor, that uh, America's got talent factor that the judges are looking for. So um, if you get your hands on this, definitely try it first without water uh, and then with a little bit and then figure it out. And I was just, just looking at the, I'm just looking at the legs. So nice and creamy and slow. Talking about legs, whiskey legs. Okay, excellent. So what do I think? Um, I think a very, very solid B plus, A minus. Yeah, uh, I think top notch. Definitely, 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 definitely. Uh, get your hands on this uh, if you can. So, well done. What's next? Burgundy cask is what's next. We will uh, clean our palates and our minds. I'll be back with you in two seconds. Hello, and we're back after this Commercial break, you know, can't uh, can't leave the advertisers hanging. Okay, so now this is what we have. We have a 2004 Burgundy Cask, single cask from Glen Moray, bottled at 60.1% ABV. This is cask number 213. Bow. Non-chill filtered, no coloring added. At cost strength, the way whiskey is supposed to be drunk. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn Murray. Thank you. I appreciate this. Means a lot. Okay. What do we have here? 
Hmm. It's quite similar in his profile. Like, if you gave this to me blind right next to each other, ah, man, I don't know. I don't know if I would immediately tell the difference. Um, maybe this one is more red fruits, you know, and more nutty than the other one. So this is more uh, almonds and hazelnuts. This is a little more understated chocolate as well, milk chocolate, some cherries and this, and this blood orange, blood orange citrus. Oh, coffee beans, roasted coffee beans. But again, you know, quite similar in intensity, quite similar in the in the flavor wheel where these two whiskeys uh, sit. So, which which kind of, which I guess kind of brings me to the point is, then should you buy all three, right? Because this is you have the Chardonnay cost, you have the Burgundy cost, and you have the Chenin Blanc cost, and they are slightly different whiskeys from each other, not miles apart. So it's not like you get completely different flavor profiles from each whiskey. There, there's a lot of aroma overlap, if you ask me. And in terms of quality, I think there's a very small difference, right? So it's not like one is super bad and one is outstanding. I think they're all very, very good. So the question you have to ask yourself is, do I need to get all three? And the answer to that is probably not, you know? What I would suggest is if three friends got together and bought one each and then you could share. And I think that's probably the best way of doing this. I think I like this nose better than the uh, Chenin Blanc cask. Interesting, it's a little meaty as well. I like it, Chen Chen. Wow. I take back what I just said. <laughs> Quite a different whiskey on the palate. Quite a different whiskey on the palate, even if very similar on the nose. This is more, this is more dark chocolate. This is more treacle and jam. And again, yes, ginger and and cinnamon and, uh, and and the and the the tannic spices are there but there's a there's a huge red fruit component to this again i want to say red grapes which is such an obvious uh, flavor profile so i'm not going to say it but this is definitely more in the in the dark caramel dark chocolate range wow this is more creamy um this is more Ovaltine, so malty as well, but in a nice way. It's a, it's not a, it's not a dull rounded malt. It's a, it's a nice sharp uh, and crispy malt. This nose is better as well. Yeah. Again, super nice finish. Cinnamon didn't burn. I think my palate's used to it. It could be that. Uh, Cause the Chenin Blanc burnt um, and it was quite spicy. This one is not so spicy. Uh, I get more um, oaky cinnamon on this uh, versus the uh, versus the spice on the Chenin Blanc. Again, I, you know, uh, I'm not really comparing them head to head. Just you know, one whiskey after the other. So it's not so much a head to head comparison as is it's a it's a series review if you like. But look, overall, I'm really impressed and what they've put in this bottle. Uh, all three of them actually, the Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, and the Burgundy uh, cask uh, maturation. It's really good. Did I tell you what the cost number on this is? The, this is cost 341. So, yes, overall, I yeah, you know, man, I'm, uh, I'm quite impressed with what Glenn Murray have done. Uh, obviously, this has been, um, you know, a, a surprise uh, in waiting. Uh, you know, they, they put these uh, babies uh, to rest about 16, 17 years ago. And which makes me think that there are quite a few surprises, hopefully, on the horizon from Glenn Moray. Uh, and if they're any good as this, then I think we've, uh, we've, we've done a good job. I think we have. A, we have. Mm, nice. 
Yes. We have a winner on our hands, is what I was gonna say. Definitely good. So, my advice, get, get three of your friends, get two of your friends, uh, and buy a bottle each, and then share it amongst yourselves. And I think that's the best way to try out uh, all three. I think you should try all three. Uh, it might even be fun to do a little blind tasting and, uh, and find the charlatan among you who says he knows his whiskeys. Uh, and that would be me, 100% I'm failing if uh, these three whiskeys are put uh, in front of me completely blind. There's maybe minuscule differences in each of them, but I think overall they're fantastic whiskeys. I think they're at a good price point. Uh, and uh, you know, they served at cost strength, so poof, you win. You know, you're already winning. And it's non-chill filtered and they're not, um, and they're not colored and you know, that's always a good thing. So, yes. So uh, this one, definitely an A minus. So uh, slightly above the B plus of the Chenin Blanc. <coughs> I'm not sure what I uh, graded the, the Chardonnay cost, but I think it was, uh, it was as good as maybe the, Ch uh, the Chenin Blanc cost, but I think the Burgundy, Burgundy cost uh, by a pip, uh, in my opinion. So there you have it. Uh, three uh, wine matured uh, single cost from Glen Moray. Uh, brought to you uh, from the good folks over at The Malt Activist. And when I say good folks, I just mean myself. So a thank you. Thank you for joining me for this whiskey review. I'm The Malt Activist. Until next time.